Hello, my name is Caleb Smith, and I'm here on behalf of the Rocket Miner newspaper to provide an update for this November 20th, 2020. Now I'm going to talk about the coronavirus today, as we do most days. And I'll be throwing some figures at you shortly. But I do want to take a moment to acknowledge the fact that um, they're not always the best way to... Um, Gauge it, to gauge the impact of this. We try to quantify things, talk about how much time something took, um, how much weight, uh, maybe how much something weighs, how much money something costs you, um, distances travel. There's a certain point when smaller numbers, the stuff that is usually right in front of us and aren't in front of our nose, um, we're usually pretty um, spot on on having that. I'm decades removed from my y years running on the track, and it wasn't a very distinguished career, but I can still generally eyeball um, distances within quarter mile, half mile or so, especially that 100 yard, 100 meter distance that I traveled so many times. But there's a certain point when it's some of the distances, the figures involved, start to get farther out of reach and harder to um, connect with, to kind of put a mental figure. I think of tr some of the trillion dollar deficits that countries, including our own in some cases, have run up. I don't think there's a, um, I've never, I don't think I've met the person who can say that, yep, I was in a place where, yep, I saw trillion dollars um, worth of X, anything, trillion dollars worth of gold, trillion dollars um, worth of um, uranium. Um, it's hard, it's, there's a certain point where even a billion dollars is hard to match, let alone a trillion. And it becomes impersonal, and it becomes harder to, since it doesn't fit into our regular frame of reference, it's kind of harder to factor it in. And I don't like reading these coronavirus numbers on such a regular basis and seeing them continue to increase and to see the magnitude that they're taking on. When you're, if you're not careful, you can, it's easy to forget that each single addition to the death count, um, or even each singular additional hospitalized person, that's, that's, um, that's a son or daughter to someone, quite possibly a parent, grandparent, um, sibling, aunt, uncle, the, uh, cool cousin, three times removed but still invited to the party. Each of them have their individual histories, um, family connections, friends, um, impact they have on the, the world around them, and just by talking about how we see X numbers more than the day before doesn't fully capture the weight of the lives of the, um, of the, of, of the loss to the communities, um, to the individual stuff. Part of the reason we keep turning to the numbers is that that's the easiest way. So with that all said, today, um, the deaths in the United States related to the coronavirus are now at the highest levels that they have been since May. Uh, back in the spring, when the majority of the, at that time, the majority of the deaths seemed to be concentrated on the coast and primarily New York City. Right now, it's um, regrettably much more spread across the country. Um, according to the Associated Press, um, the overall U.S. Death, death toll has reached about 254,000 people. That's um, about a quarter of a million. Um, confirmed infections have surpassed more than 11.8 million. Um, and just on Thursday alone, there were almost 1,088,000 ,000 new cases reported. Um, and like I said, new cases is one that's, there's a progression. It's new cases is 
is troublesome. Another figure we look at is hospitalizations. Um, the U.S. just recently hit an all-time high of more than 80,000 um, people hospitalized with the coronavirus. Um, shifting the focus to a bit more locally, um, Sweetwater County Public Health um, has been sharing more updates with their figures. And just talking about the cases from Saturday, um, November 14th through 2 p.m., um, Friday, November 20th, um, they reported 362 positive cases in that time. That's an average of at least 50 a day. We're currently at, we currently have six hospitalizations. And it's estimated that based on, it's, or with, with the figures that we have in hand, that, that current active cases are at 369. Our overall figures is that there have been 1,334 um, lab confirmed, or cases in Sweetwater County. Um, and that the majority of that, uh, 958, um, have recovered. We're now up to seven deaths. And I guess one figure that um, that we continue to keep an eye on is the um, percentage of a test that came back positive. Well, we've talked before about how, in theory, you want to test 100 people, have zero positive results. Um, they usually say that somewhere between 2 and 5% indicates that that's a that's a possible surge increase. Um, you really want it in you want it in single digits, and preferably you want it um, as close to zero as possible. Um, over that seven day period um, of the result of the results that they've gotten back, um, Memorial Hospital, Sweetwater County, reported a twenty nine percent positive rate, and the Castle Rock Med Medical Center uh, reported a twenty three percent. So. That means at least one in four, one in five of the people getting tested are coming back positive. It's one reason why um, the advice from County Health that's um, that you've heard many times before is to wear your mask, wash hands, um, maintain a distance um, wherever you can. In addition to the other common sense stuff, stay home if you're sick, um, get tested if you're um, displaying um, symptoms of coronavirus or you've um, had contact with someone who um, has tested positive. And part of the reason why I wanted to talk about individuals within the greater numbers, um, family, friends, is that I want to talk real quick about Thanksgiving. I know that throughout, the, as things um, slowed down throughout the summer, um, Especially in, in some other states where my relatives were at, where I was planning to visit, they had some more um, tighter restrictions than we've had in Wyoming. Um, more than a few family plans got canceled along the way. Uh, family reunion, July 4th, um, big family shebang. Um, didn't quite happen the way as scheduled this, as normally would take place or scheduled this year. And I know more than a few of us are like, okay, this is rough, but we're we're hopeful that come Thanksgiving, definitely by Christmas, I'm we're, we're, hopefully we'll have this under control. And at least in Sweetwater County, I'd say no. It's um, we're seeing some of the worst numbers we've seen we've seen this whole time, with indications that we're pro it's probably going to um, get more serious as it progresses. And I'm it's I'm miss hanging out with my close family. I'm a proud transplant to Wyoming. I've been quite happy to be here more than uh, more than 13 years. Um, and my family's very pleased to visit Wyoming whenever possible. They have made trips where they visited the state and they didn't quite see me. And with the beauty and the sights the state has to offer, there's part of me going like, I get it. If I'd ever find myself somewhere, I'm pretty sure my parents, or especially my mother, would keep coming to Wyoming, uh, whether I'm here or not. Um, good people, good nature, good open spaces, just good land. And while I'd like to see them, and I'm sure that's the case for the majority of people, what we're being asked to do by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, um, County Health, is just to ask some questions this Thanksgiving. They're discouraging travel, especially in places that are um, having a higher rate of coronavirus. And 
I'm not specifically going to tell you what you need to do. I don't know your situation. I um, I can barely wrap myself around what's going on inside this head, let alone what's, what's going on in your cabeza, on your skull. But I would just ask that you just consider a handful of questions that um, for uh, for for the families and people who um, are are looking ahead to Thanksgiving and um, plans may or may not still be in flux. Um, they just have, these are some questions that people are asked to consider uh, to help pe to help them decide what is best for you and your family. Um, question one: Are you someone in your household? or someone you will be visiting at increased re risk for getting very sick from COVID. Uh, risk factors we're, we know of are like high blood pressure, diabetes, um, obesity, um, cancer, heart risk, um, trouble with lungs, um, that type of stuff. Another question is, are cases high or increasing in your community or in your de destination? You can check out the CDC COVID data tracker for the latest number of cases, or there, that's or I was looking at one of the Harvard University breakdowns of county by counties. Those resources are out there. Um, we're also asked to consider: Are hospitals in your community or your destination overwhelmed with patients who have COVID-19? To find out, check state and local public health department websites. Um, I keep pointing people to the um, state. Uh, Department of Health website where there's a bit on hospitalizations. Um, Memorial Hospital, according to the self-reported data, has nine ICU beds, intensive care unit beds. And I'm pulling this up as we speak. And of that figure, um, and I've been watching it for about the last month or six weeks, and I would note that statewide, we have more than 200 people hospitalized. Um, even at, at, the begin, at the beginning of the month, that number was close, much closer to 100, but it's about doubled over the last few weeks. But going back to Memorial Hospital, Sweetwater County, um, like I said, it's, if you remember the health reports before, we have six people hospitalized. And presently, we have one open adult ICU bed. Um, and just in case you're curious up the road, uh, Memorial Hospital of Carbon County, six beds. They presently have two open. So only one third um, of the ICU beds are available in Carbon County. It's in Memorial Hospital Carbon County. Only one ninth of the ICU adult beds in Sweetwater Memorial are available at this time. Now, like I said, self-reported. There might be a bit of delay. There could be uh, more beds open. There might. Uh, the one that's listed right now may not be there. And that's not the only indicators, but that's just one of the, just one of the figures that have, uh, that's at, at my hands right now. Pardon my stuttering. Another question that we're asked, that we should ask, is does your home or destination have requirements or restrictions on travelers? Um, check state and local requirements before you travel. Um, I have family in Canada, and right now the Canadian border is closed to non-essential travel. Um, the Toronto Raptors aren't allowed to play, or aren't allowed to do home games right now, um, and they're a um, high -tier, high tier, high caliber team. They have way more push than I, and pull than I'll ever have at a border crossing. Um, another question is: During the 14 days before you travel. Have you or those you are visiting had close contact with people they don't live with? Um, maybe you've been maybe you've been to a birthday party, um, some other celebration of sort, um, that type of thing. Um, do your plans include traveling by bus, train, or air, which might make staying six feet apart difficult? Um, having done a greyhound, a very memorable greyhound trip, and thinking about some of the people and the hygiene involved, that's. Um, even outside of COVID, that's something that I, I have become, become quite aware of. And then one of the other questions is, are you traveling with people who don't live with you? Um, I know, I myself, I my sister lives in Houston. Uh, there are many times where I've sometimes um, 
I visited her. We spent a little bit of time together, and then we together uh, went to travel to catch up with the rest of the family. Um, that would be one of those types of cases. Like I said, uh, this is just some questions to factor. And personally, there are additional things that um, weigh on my mind when I'm um, weighing pros and cons. Um, I've had some very strong um, conversations with uh, good friends, people I care for. And I see how sometimes people can be in very similar situations and coming to different conclusions. Uh, it's interesting how when you put it through the machine in your head, what will come out. Like I said, I'm not telling you uh, personally that you shouldn't travel for Thanksgiving. I, I'm making I'm I'm making that determination for myself. And if and when others would ask, I'd if if requested, I'd give people the opinion. I'm just asking that people consider these questions, and uh, probably it was a few more than just that. The CDC is discouraging it, but they're not saying no. And there's no government mandate that says, nope, we're locked down at this moment. Um, I'm thankful for that. I'm hopeful that people make smart, responsible decisions. One of the other posts that I've seen online, and I'm pretty sure it was one of the ones from one of our local um, healthcare professionals, is that um, one of the reasons why we're doing all these extra things, that we're... Um, wearing masks, that we are cutting down on travel, where we might just be having a turkey setting, or a much smaller bird for a um, closer together um, celebration this coming Thanksgiving. Is that when we get to the point, hopefully soon, where we can um, spread about the country a bit more, do a lot more visiting, and I personally intend to make up for a lot of lost time when it comes to travel and reunions and um, that type of stuff. The goal is, is that we want everyone to be participating in that. And we don't want to be thinking about the individuals in our life who were there a short time ago but were taken from us by COVID. And whether that was their own choices or being infected by somebody else, I preferably want to avoid that as much as possible. And I want that for the people around me to avoid that as possible too. So just ask these questions and be honest. That's all I can ask of you. Anyway, this is Caleb Smith with the Rocket Miner newspaper having talked for way longer than I intended, but still wanting to take a little bit more time to wish you a good day and a safe tomorrow. Bye.